Hello friends, welcome back to Mustack. In today's session, again, we are going to talk about the interesting topic called GitHub REST APIs. So this REST API is very useful when you are writing some script. Okay, so it can be a curl script or if you want to call these REST APIs from some other APIs. So here in this session, we are going to integrate via Postman. So we, from Postman, we try to uh, you know, uh, call these REST APIs. So I have I know, prepared few use cases like, <clears throat> you know, how to create user profile or how to create code repository from the postman or how to get the, so uh, let's say I have a CICD pipeline in my GitHub repository, how to get the details about that workflow and even how to trigger that pipeline workflow from our, you know, postman. So let's see one by one, okay, step by step, we, we, we execute these REST APIs and, you know, make some fruitful session. Okay, so let's jump on to the first step. So first step, we need to have the we need to have the personal access token. Okay, so let's go ahead and first create the personal access token. So you need to go to your so log into your GitHub account and go to settings. Okay, inside the settings, go to developer settings here, and there is a section called personal access token. Okay. So you can go ahead and create new access token over here. Just give a name, select repo, and select uh, you know. You can say delete repo, okay, repo, or you can select all the options, no problem. And once you are done, you'll get a personal access token. So I already created it, okay. So let me go back one step. You can see here I have created with her. Uh, it's a token over here, and I have just selected you know repo and admin repo hook and delete repo. That's it. Okay, let's go ahead. And so, my once your personal access to access token is ready, you can go ahead and explore this link. I need and uh, you know, this link in the description below, but here all the risk related, related information is available. Okay, so. Why we have created personal access token? Because we need personal access token for authentication. So Postman will be able to access this REST API with that token only. Okay. So let's jump onto the Postman now. Okay. So I have created a collection. Okay. Maybe I'll share this collection in the description, or you know, uh, I'll upload it in the drive, and then you, know, you can get it from there. Okay. So let's go ahead and first look at the the uh, details about the user profile. So you can see this is the REST API which we can use to get the details about the user user profile. So git ak.github.com users slash. So there are two REST APIs here. Okay, you can see all the user details. You can simply go ahead and run this. So I'll just show you. I'll just uh, create a duplicate for this duplicate and. Here, so this first. And the okay. And if I trigger it, you know, you will get all the users here. Okay, so right now I know only one user was there. So I'm able to see only one user. Okay. Now, if I wanted to go, go and see the specific user details, then user slash platform. That means your user ID over here. Now you get it specific. So right now we are not able to see the difference because I have only single user over there in my GitHub account. So you wanted to get the details in the header. You need to pass that token which you have created. So this is the access token you have created from there. Okay, and pass the operation header over here. Okay, so this is the first REST API we you know we explored. So get the users or user profile details. Okay, you can pass a specific user, or if you want to see all the users, you can go ahead and do that. Second thing, what we'll do, we we'll create a repo. Okay, for repository. So while creating repository, we need to use the URL and post method. So this is simple URL under user, you just say repos, okay. And in the post, you pass the body where you are passing the repository name. 
Auto init it will create a readme file. We are seeing the scope whether it's a public or private. So we are seeing private is equal to true. And git ignore file. So we are using template called nano C. So this template will create git ignore file. Okay. So you can pass more parentheses, you can pass distinctions, uh, you know, instead of private, you can pass public, you can to make it uh, public. Okay. You can give here, you know, the a web page link and all that, but I have passed limited information here. Let's go ahead and trigger this. Okay. So you can see here. Okay. So now this see, so this repo has been created in my uh, code repository under this user. So let's see whether it's created or not. Let me go to my account here. And here if I just say no, sir. Okay. Slash as a blog. You can see here. So I got a readme file, I got a readme note file, and these two files are created uh, because I have mentioned over there I want you know these two files. Okay. So and if you see this is a private report. You can create public with the same URL, just you need to mention in the body properly in your parameters. So this is a secondary CPI which we have stored now. Okay. So let me go back now. Let me go back to my post now. now I want to trigger, you know, uh, you know. <clears throat> uh, first, let's see what all repositories are available in, under your, you know. Uh, just now we have created a repository. Now the same URL. If I change the method from post to get, it will give you all the repositories available under that user. Can go ahead, and you can see I have multiple repositories available here under this user. In the left hand side, you can see. I have used this URL and in the header I have passed the token inside body. Uh, I have given the master. So, so body is not required here. Okay, since it's a get method. Since I'm duplicating that's in the body thing. Okay, so you don't need any body here. Okay, and all the repos will be listed down here in the response. Okay, so this is the third RST page. It's very useful to get the repository details. Now, let me show you how to trigger your you know, CICD pipeline workflow from Postman using REST API. So, for that, we need to make some changes to your workflow. Let's go ahead and see that what we need to do. Let me go to first my so this is my repository, okay, code repository where I have. CICD pipeline workflow. Okay. So if you want to get the detail about this workflow, what we have done, so please follow my previous sessions. Okay. There I mentioned how to do the pipeline using GitHub action, how to implement caching, how to load the artifact, how to download the artifact, okay, how to share that artifact between two jobs, all those details I have given in the previous session. Here we are talking about how to trigger this flow manually, okay, or how to trigger this flow from some API. So you, if you see here, I have commented this part. Okay. So this is a trigger. I'm adding a workflow dispatch event over here. And this workflow dispatch event, we take this workflow, should not trigger manning, uh, should not trigger automatically, it should be triggered manually. Either you can go to actions here and trigger this flow. This flow from here, you can see that I'll show you. So this workflow has Workflow underscore dispatch event trigger. You can go ahead and manually can trigger. I don't want to trigger manually from here. We'll go ahead and trigger from Postman. Okay. So for that, I need to know the flow ID okay, of this, this workflow. So here you cannot find it easily, or maybe I'm not sure how to get it. From the Postman, we'll get the details. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the detail about our workflow. So the REST API is under repos, you need to give user, then workflow name, under actions, we need to say workflows. So what we are saying is under this repository, under actions, whatever flows are there, you need to use. Okay, so for this hit method and the headers, we don't need access token over here, simply just trigger this, you will be able to see. Since it is a public work uh, repository, you will be able to see. So this is the ID I need to use. 
Okay, so this ID will be using while triggering our workflow. So let's go ahead now and trigger. So final REST API, we are going to do a post method. Again, repos, same thing. Repository name, actions, workflows under that workflow ID and I'm seeing these patches. Okay, that means this flow, the workflow which we have work flow underscore dispatch with that flow will be triggered. So let's see that. In header and passing access token, here we need access token. Okay. And then body, I'm saying that that workflow is referring master branch. So here I'm giving reference to the master branch. Okay. So let's go ahead and trigger this and see whether my workflow is getting triggered or not. So you'll get 204, which is the expected output, no content. And if you go to your see now, it's got triggered. It's triggering first job, it will build job. Okay. So that's the intention about triggering the flow manually from the postman. Okay. Yeah. That's all from this session. Hope you liked it. I recommend you to explore more. There are a lot of SDKs available. This is just a glimpse of our, you know, from that ocean. Okay. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share with the friends. Hit the like button. Hit the you know, bell icon so that you get, you know, notification for me. So see you in the, you know, coming sessions with the different topics. Thanks. Bye-bye.